Hi guys, um, like Alexi mentioned, uh, my name is Vitaly. Um, I'm a data scientist at LinkedIn. I work uh, on the product data science team at LinkedIn, currently doing some uh, stuff around also a profile, understanding them better and extracting more data out of them and getting more data uh, into them. Like it appears every other company in the world were also hiring. So if you guys interested, feel free to connect uh, with me on LinkedIn. Um, we will do this talk uh, kind of short and uh, like you can see it will be no presentation, just us will be writing uh, some uh, machine learning code. Um, what we are trying to achieve, and we're doing it for the first time, so kind of be patient with us. Hopefully uh, we will, uh, won't have any glitches and uh, everything will work. But uh, we're trying to do, uh, um, show how kind of machine learning and big data has progressed so much that now we can do kind of pretty sophisticated stuff uh, with very small amount of code. So I will kind of, in order to show, show that, I will do it online with you. Um, I won't be using the REPL even though that's kind of one of the uh, neatest features uh, about Scala. The problem is, at least for Scalding, since you write your job and only when you actually uh, write the last line, which is the right, it's all kind of uh, submitted and gets analyzed and optimized and stuff like that. So it doesn't really work uh, well with, uh, in a REPL mode uh, as of now. Uh, but still, um, you will be able to see um, some neat stuff, hopefully. So I will start with, uh, again, basic stuff that we, and Jan mentioned it, as data scientists do. It's not just machine learning algorithm. It's mostly about processing data. And as we all know, with Nav Hadoop, uh, you know, there are two different things we do. We, ma we either map our da data from one form uh, to another, transform, but uh, that is actually not the most interesting part of the process because uh, we do it kind of, you know, we just, it's a transformation and it's uh, pretty easy to do. The, uh, what I learned, the actual more interesting stuff is how can we optimize what we do on the reduce stage where we get some large amount of data and we need to reduce it uh, to, to one thing. And then um, the working example for me uh, during this talk will be uh, just Wikipedia. So just to show you, I have here, so let's see, more, so I have this uh, articles TXT that you can see is just for some reason the first thing is an anarchism and well, just text. And it will be just a lot of uh, um, kind of tuples where the first one, uh, the first element of the tuple is the article name and everything else is just text. So we use kind of some parsing library. It, I don't know how well it parses, but it, it, it will be fine for uh, our examples today. Um, the other thing is I actually prefer uh, to work with uh, objects and classes, uh, but I will be working mostly with tuples since uh, I will be working in local mode here without a cluster. What's uh, uh, one thing about great about uh, cascading and scaling that is based on that it has a, a very good um, local mode that you can basically write your code, run it locally, and just sub uh, with no modifications whatsoever to the code, you can submit it to the cluster, and it will work uh, um, as well there. But uh, there is this one thing uh, that also Jan mentioned in his previous talk and Chris is here that he's worked on the Avro stuff. And unfortunately I realized just today that Avro also works now on local mode. So we'll try it some other time, but uh, as of now we'll work on tuples. And the first thing, you know, let's start with um, something simple and it's uh, a basic query that we, we do sometime. We want to get the top articles or the top uh, uh, elements in our data set. For Wikipedia, you know, a simple uh, top thing can be, be, let's get the longest articles in our data set. So let's just start writing the code and top articles. Okay, so, um, well, articles, I think I have it. So, um, 
those of you who uh, don't know um, cascading, it works with, um, there is a pipe and there is also something called type pipe. So um, I prefer wo to work with type pipes. Um, it kind of makes the code look cleaner, uh, I think, and also, I think one of the great things what kind of made me switch to Scala is the, um, the fact that it is strong type, so kind of avoiding using it will be just kind of a shame. So we're uh, basically getting it, and it's, you can hear, you, they have type TSV format, and here we define the type, which is, in my case, string and string. And we get it from, in my case, and hopefully you can see that, source main data articles dot txt. Okay, so now we have our articles, and like I said, we want to find um, the longest uh, the, the longest article um, on, on Wikipedia. So, kind of there are many uh, many ways to do that. Um, for example, and again, let's maybe complete the example of, uh, to show how basic war count in Scalding Wars. So if we want the war counts, and um, it will be articles dot group by, and it's kind of very much similar to uh, the Scala way. Uh, we want to group by uh, the second, and we we kind of have the uh, we have now a string, but the string represents uh, represents uh, the list. So we we need to kind of. Um, there is a map value that takes every element and transforms it uh, to something else. So we have the long string and we can just split it. So, sorry, it's, let's take the second one and let's just split it according to some re regex. And now that, um, let's see what we got here. Um, as you can see, it's basically a string, an array of string, and now we can also, if we do length or size on the string, basically this is how we get uh, the because, uh, war, war count uh, in, scal in scalding. But l like I said, that's not, um, you know, that's pretty basic stuff. Let's try to get uh, uh, the, top, uh, the top article. Any ideas about how, what should I write in order to get the, the top articles by length? Anyone? Okay, Chris, do you know? Well, so we can, for one example, we can take this war count and we can just um, order it. Um, so it doesn't have order by. In order to do order by on scalding, um, we can just do um, fingers, sorry, has values. It gives me, if we two type pipe, it gives me back a type pipe. Maybe I should write it in this um, Scala form, which is um, kind of a two type pipe. I get my type back so and here we can group by it again but there is a group all which basically groups on a unit so I, I get um, everything uh, uh, kind of group all what it does it sends uh, the entire data from all all the mappers um, to a single reducer and that's very handy for sorting so here I can do sort by and now if I sort by the second element and again, and take the top x, then um, kind of gives me uh, what I want. Um, but it's kind of not the um, not the cleanest way uh, to do it because um, I think there um, kind there must be some other way. And this other way is it all involves something that. Uh, it's really cool about uh, scalding, and one of the things I uh, like kind of most about it is it, um, it's called aggregators. They have this, um, I don't know if we call it 
kind of date uh, design pattern, but it's basically uh, implementing custom reducer in just three steps. So let's look at um, how an aggregator looks like. So aggregator. No, nope, not this one. Aggregator is part for the algebra. So one word about algebra is something that is used a lot with um, sculling, but it's actually uh, not part. Um, it, it, uh, you can use it without uh, scalding as well. It's just a library uh, to do some kind of basic uh, algebra stuff. And since it's developed by Twitter, then it has the word bird in it. Um, and it, uh, it's a trait where you only need to define three things. It's the prepare. Prepare is, again, if you're thinking about it in terms of map reduce, it's like the first mapping on your data to prepare it for the reduce stage. Then the reduce that gets a left element, a right element, and you combine it. And uh, present is kind of a map after, another map after the reduce. It can be just identity, or um, it can be if you need to form your data from B to C, to, uh, you want to output it in some other form, then you also implement uh, the present. So that's the basic trait. But as we will see, it's actually a pre powerful trait. So let's try to kind of um, define a class here and top and elements that gets max, which is will be an int, and it will extend an aggregator. So aggregator need to get three, uh, three types. So first of all, what is the data that we will uh, we will do it on. So we will run on all, all the articles that we have, and we will basically, what, uh, our starting point will be, will be a string. So we, we, we want a string, and, but um, the string of the text of, of uh, sorry, the string of text. The, what we want to get back and what we uh, want to reduce is a, a list. Uh, a list of all the elements. Um, let's say, want a list of the type uh, top counts. So we will do it on. Let's see, we can do it here. Um, yes, Let, let's go do it from here because here we already uh, kind of have the counts. And um, so let's start with ints and. Group all, what we have from group all. Sorry about that, I just need the type string and int, yes. String and int. Okay, and we want to return a list of the top string and ints. And that's actually enough, so um, I will list the third one as uh, basically the same because in my um, I, I, I'm not interested in getting, getting this uh, data in some other form. I'm actually pretty satisfied with getting it as a, the top list. So, like I said, I need to implement uh, those three functions. The first one will be prepare. So I somehow need to take this input and um, one element and to, uh, to, transfer, to transform it to something that I can reduce. So. In that case, it's just easy. It's list of input. That is how I prepare my data in order to be reduced. The second one is the reduce itself. Um, so here, again, uh, what we need to do, this is the signature of the function. As you can see, it takes left, it takes right. And we, we want to, uh, to get the top list uh, according by this count. So let's kind of define an implicit ordering, implicit uh, order on equals ordering dot by, uh, which is this ordering will be from what we have here, string and int to an int, right? And we want to order it by, uh, by the second element by the second element, and we, because we are interested in the top, we want, uh, want the ordering reversed. So again, we 
um, we kind of uh, define the ordering here. So again, now there, uh, remember, I, I have two lists and I need to get back one list that will have the top uh, max, uh, if I remember this class has um, max elements in it because I'm interested in the top n which max is this n. Um, kind of one way to do it is just we can concatenate both strings, we can sort them now with sort and since we have an implicit ordering that will work and we can just take the top max element out of it. And um, the last function will be the present, which is, in this case, since I'm interested in getting uh, the same exact data, it will be just uh, a reduction, which is the, the parameter to present. So this is my um, aggregator pattern. I prepare my data, I somehow reduce it, which is uh, here that where uh, uh, all the code went, and present is just an identity function. So now after I've done the group all, and I get all my um, work, uh, work counts and data um, kind of in single list, I can just do the aggregate, and what aggregate expects, uh, expects to get is an aggregator. And we, ha uh, we have one here, so let's say top, and elements, let's say in the top 100 Wikipedia articles, and you can see here that what I get as return is a, a list of string of int, which is exactly what I wanted. And now we can, um, uh, sorry, get, get the values out of it. Sorry, the two pipe. Um, values out of it and kind of to make it um, more, uh, um, to get not the list but uh, every element in a single row, it's just a, an identity flat map. So the identity flat map basically takes the list and break it down to a, a type pipe of, um, so up, up to he, uh, here we have a um, typed pipe of something that looks basically like that, string and int. And since typed pipe is, you can look at it as every element is a, it will eventually be a line in your file, then. Uh, you, scroll up, yes, scroll up. It, what? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, yes. Okay. Yeah, that I should look here. And what flat map on the list is how, well, you're kind of all know, will just return me a string and an int. And now I can just write it to some, again, TSV file, which we'll call it the source and data longest.txt. Okay, so just let's here um, just call this function that we call top, uh, top articles. And uh, since I will be using uh, parameters uh, and we'll be using uh, some of this function, no, actually we can uh, use it as well. Uh, top and, sorry, top articles. We can just now run it. So let's see uh, how it runs, hopefully I didn't make uh, a lot of mistake by this code. So the way to run, uh, so I, I'm a fan of Maven. I kind of didn't get to uh, SBT. Um, I know it's like the new kid on block, but I've been using Maven for a while and still like Maven. And uh, Maven has a, a very nice Scala plugin that uh, just has Scala run. And, he, and Chris will show you its con uh, console function. and and this is how you kind of add arguments to your code and well, so I kind of like it. So now we just run it and now it runs everything in a local mode. So let's see, 
uh, launcher aggregate by okay it's ended which is uh, with successfully so that's good let's see uh, what we got here so I believe I uh, kind of called it longest and as you can see it's um, uh, I'm using only kind of uh, a sample uh, a sample of the Wikipedia uh, data in order to um, make it run fast enough and not just wait uh, for stuff but as you can see the symbol kind of starts with uh, the letter A and we got uh, what we wanted they kind of all sorted by their length and this is the top uh, top hundred articles by length uh, in my uh, sample so that's great but it's kind of uh, so selecting top elements is a very common pattern and even though you know I didn't write um, too much code, there is still so, uh, some code involved um, in here, and we surely we can make it, uh, uh, we can do it better. So again, just to remind you, um, let's see, sorry, just to remind you, this part is just getting the word counts, and this part is aggregating, uh, aggregating over uh, over the word counts and uh, getting the top element. And this is uh, kind of uh, what I need to write, the logic to get the top element. So actually, Twitter, uh, the Twitter guys was uh, very uh, nice, and they realized that it's also a very common pattern. And one thing I didn't mention that uh, also this reduce function I wrote is actually not that, um, not that efficient. Uh, I'm taking all the lists, I'm actually summing them, sorting them uh, all time again. So for example, the first time I sorry, I, the second time it will hit reduce, the, the left element will already be sorted. So there is no way in need to sort them again. So one thing I could do is just merge them. That is one thing. But there's actually a, a better way to do it and it's using a priority queue. So what Twitter did, they actually implemented a um, priority queue aggregator. So let's see, new priority queue to list aggregator. Well, that's a mouthful. Yes, and that actually string int, uh, and that's the parameter. If you can see, it also gets max. So it gets 100, and it's. Oh, um, let's kind of look at it uh, once. One second. So this is how priority queue aggregate looks like. It gets a max and gets an implicit ordering. So Again, one way is to define this implicit order. If you're already sorting, uh, ordering something that has an implicit order, um, you can just use it. Um, what, uh, one thing to notice here is it extends some priority queue aggregator which, and implements only the function present, which present basically takes the priority queue and turns it in, into a list because in most cases, we're interested to get back the list uh, of the top uh, elements. But let's look at this, the magic that happens in the priority queue aggregator is just here. And actually, priority queue aggregator extends something else that's called a mono, monoid aggregator. So monoid is probably the most useful element uh, in kind of data science. It's all we do can probably explain in monoids. And if you get the concept of monoids, it's a very, very simple trait. It just has zero and it has a plus. And uh, one of the creators of uh, Scalding uh, from Twitter, this guy, his name is Oscar Boykin. So he likes to walk around Twitter and ask people uh, what they do and explain them how it can be implemented using a mon monoid. Because, <laughs> and at least up until now, he hasn't failed in his task. He could explain everything, how it can be. So, Really, if there is like one thing, this whole category theory has this, you know, this explosive functor mo monads, which nice, but it, at least in my pra uh, practice, they're not uh, extremely useful, but monoid is extremely useful. And basically uh, what I did here and now with the uh, prepare and uh, reduce for those of you who kind of know this is basically uh, mo monoid. So instead of, uh, instead of doing uh, prepare, um, prepare and reduce, you can just use a monoid if you have one, and you can define one of your own and just give it a, a monoid. And then the prepare is basically 
And that's what they do here. They're using a priority queue monoid, which is, again, kind of can be, it's very simple. You kind of build it and do stuff with it. But, and well, it has the zero, which is the minimum priority queue, and has a plus, which is pretty basic. Um, so the same code will run, and now I don't need uh, all, this, uh, all this stuff, and actually it will run uh, beautifully also with this priority queue to list aggregator, and all the code will work the same. And instead of just showing you the same results, uh, let me show you some other uh, cool aggregators uh, uh, Scalding has. So one they have is an averager, is um, basically the way, one of the ways to compute um, um, it's also a monoid. One of the best, uh, the, way, the way to compute an average um, is to kind of sum and then count. You know, you can do it in one pass, you can do it in two passes, but uh, their averager is actually, it's a streaming mean, so it just does one pass and it doesn't hold two values uh, during the pass, it just holds a, a, a single one and you get an average, which is, again, extremely useful um, in a lot of cases. If you need more than um, then just the average, there is the moments uh, aggregate, which is not a monoid, it's a group, but uh, for all things it can be a monoid. And here you can see that, um, where, is, where are the moments? Sorry, here. So again, you just fire the moment uh, aggregator and you get a couple of five elements, uh, actually it will be six, that gets you the count, the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, the skewness, and the kurtosis uh, of your data set. Again, extremely useful, one line, just switch what uh, I wrote there with the my aggregator, with the, with the uh, moments uh, aggregator, and you will, uh, you, you will get uh, all of this uh, data at once. Other one, um, very cool aggregator, hyperlog log. So for you who don't know, and you can see here, there is also hyperlog log monoid. Hyperlog log, um, also can be defined as a monoid, and for those, uh, those of you who haven't heard about hyperlog log, it's a way to uh, probabil probabilistically to estimate a cardinality of a data set. So if you have a huge uh, uh, data set and you want to count the number of unique elements, so actually like sorting them and doing it unique is a very, very expensive computation. And most of the time we don't, uh, we're not interested in the exact, exact number of the uniques we have, but with just 12 bits of data, um, you can, with hyperlog log, you can get a, up to a 1% error in your approximation, which is extremely fast, extremely useful, and again, it's a monoid, just plug it in um, into your aggregate function, which I've, uh, again, written here instead of the priority clues, hyperlog log, and it works uh, beautifully. So, any questions? up until now, and then I will increase. Yes? Is there a link or an article to doing data science with monoids? No, but uh, it's probably a, um, a great idea for my next blog post. So maybe I'll write it and <laughs> share the link uh, with you. Uh, I forgot to mention all the code uh, will be on GitHub uh, later. We'll also post it, uh, uh, post the link uh, on the uh, meetup page. Something else? Okay, well, then let's see what Chris will show us. I'm probably just gonna burn through some stuff really fast because we're running a little bit late. Um, and I, I'm gonna kind of cheat a little bit because I typed most of this out and uh, we'll, we'll try it in the REPL though. Um, so I, I wanted to show you real fast um, one of my absolutely favorite tools. And if you use SBT, you probably don't care. Um, if you're like Vitaly and I and you're still stuck with Maven for reasons uh, maybe beyond your control, uh, there's this really nice Maven Scala console. And the fantastic thing about Maven Scala console is you have access to, and you can barely see that well, let me. Um, basically you have access now to, to all the libraries that you depend on in your code. Um, so I can do things like, uh, you know, I can import some algebraic operators, and then we can, wow, you probably still can't see this, sorry. Uh, let's see, is there, an, I know, hang on. Let me actually just make this guy a little smaller and then 
I can shove him up in the page. Uh, okay, can you guys actually see that now? Does it need to go up anymore? Are we okay? Okay. Um, so you can do pretty cool stuff though, actually. Uh, so like Vitaly said, um, algebra kind of came out of scalding, but it, it was so useful that they split it apart. Um, so you can do kind of amazing things with, with algebra by just importing operators. Um, and it turns out there's probably a monoid for just about everything you want. Um, and it will get, come into scope automatically when you import operators. Um, so I highly, highly, highly recommend that you try this out. Uh, it, it's really cool. You just make an SBT project or a Maven project, uh, Maven Scala console, or just run SBT console, and you'll have access to all this great stuff to play with. Um, in fact, the console, so if I could it, sort of di digress for a second, the REPL is, is by far my favorite thing uh, to sort of try stuff out with. Um, uh, so you know, you can, there's something you wanna learn, some new API you wanna play with, pop it open in the REPL, poke at it, you know, see what the, the edge cases are, uh, see how it works, that sort of stuff. Um, and in fact, pretty much everything you're gonna see today I did over the course of playing with the REPL. Okay, so, um, so one really, really important question that I need to ask and get out of the way before uh, I go on, because it affects the rest of my talk. Um, do you pronounce this Mahout or Mahout? Does anybody know? Does anybody have an opinion? Like GIF, GIF, no, Mahout? It's, it's Mahout. It's Mahout? It's Really? Yes. Okay, so I'll say my, I, I'm probably gonna slip to Mahout a bunch of times, but um, I'll try with Mahout. Okay, so let me just grab some stuff out of here, um, get it out of the way so we can, whoops. So what I'm gonna show you is a quick little example of uh, essentially wrapping nasty Mahout things with uh, some nice Scala stuff. And in fact, uh, the original version I did this in was in Scalding, um, but it's a little harder to run Scalding in the REPL at the moment. Uh, so I'm just going to do it with straight up Scala, but you can see almost uh, line by line how it translates to Scalding. Um, so I'm, I'm using the same data set that Vitaly had, so I just made up this nice little case class to play with. Um, so let's get that guy in there too. Okay, so here's the kind of where it, it gets exciting. Um, well, it's not that exciting yet. So basically, I'm just going to read up these articles. They're in text format. Um, you guys have all seen this before. And I'm just gonna split each one out and make an article out of it. So we've got a title and a body, nothing too fancy. We haven't done any really fancy text processing or anything. Um, if, if I was going to do this for real, I would probably probably go into one of the NLP toolkits or, um, or use uh, Lucene, one of the tokenizers or something like that. It would, you know, you get some nice stemming and spell checking and, and all this uh, fancy stuff that Jan was talking about before. But for our purposes, this will work. So let me paste this guy. Let's make sure it runs. Oh dear. I probably need a piece, don't I? Oh, no, that's right, I screwed this up, didn't I? Um, so live coding, what did I do wrong? Let's try this again. Did I mess up my formatting? There we go, okay, cool. So basically we have a sequence of articles. Um, you know, you can look at art zero. And it, it's got some stuff. It's exactly what Vitaly was showing you. Uh, it starts with uh, anarchism, of course. Uh, okay, so no big deal, we got some data. So what I wanna do is cluster this data. Um, and I'm really lazy. I don't wanna write my own clustering implementation. Uh, Mahout 0.8 came out like today, yesterday, something like that. I don't think they've even announced it yet. Uh, it was on their mailing list, but the jars are pushed up in uh, uh, Maven Central. So. In there, they, they have this very cool streaming clustering algorithm. Uh, so it's a single pass k-means clustering, and it works pretty well. Um, unfortunately, somewhere in there, they, they have this notion of dense vectors and sparse vectors, and some of the stuff wants to use dense vectors. So if I was gonna do this myself, um, probably what I would do is, is take all the text and use something like murmur hash to, to give it an int. Um, unfortunately, the, that makes the space of uh, you know, max int size uh, sparse vectors, and it tries to make them into dense vectors at some point, and then everything blows up, uh, and it's pretty horrible. So uh, instead, what I did really fast, this is easy to do, though, and you would probably do this anyway, because instead of just doing word count, you would probably uh, get TF-IDF scores or something. 
Um, but basically, I'm just going to pass through all the articles real fast, so let's look at this. I'm basically going to pass through the articles. Uh, I'm going to grab every single word and stick it into a set. So I basically split this guy up, um, push all the words, make them lowercase. That's my uh, janky normalization. Um, put them in this set, zip it with an index. So now every word's just going to have some number associated with it. Now it's a little nicer for me to, this is the, the cheap hash function, OK? Um, so again, nothing too fancy. So let me, let's try this guy out. I better use paste again, because nasty things happened last time. OK, so you know, we can see, uh, I'm, I'm curious like how many times the occurs, probably a lot. Yeah, so the occurs a lot. Um, so if, if we use some of Vitaly's nice stuff, we could probably make some passes, take out stop words, do fan, you know, nice stuff like that. OK, not super necessary for now, though. OK, so let's keep going. OK, um, unfortunately, I need some sort of wrapper helper function. Um, so what I'd really like to do is basically take one of my articles. I want to get out this sort of named vectors. Now, now we're, we're in Mahout land. Um, and they have these pretty nice random access sparks vectors. Um, so this particular guy is backed by a, a, a really efficient uh, int to double hash map. Um, so for us, it's essentially just a, uh, you know, we, we say basically we saw, um, we have a one in, you know, position five, and we have a, a, a two in position, you know, 600 million and three. Um, and, and for us, then, it, it's, even though this vector lives in, in dimension 600 million and three, uh, we only use two things. So sparse vectors, very nice. Um, don't reinvent the wheel. Use Mahouts. So basically, I'm just looking up where that guy actually, what his actual index is, um, using this set quick. So this is where uh, this is where the sort of REPL comes in handy a lot, because basically what I can do is in, I can go into the REPL. And do something like this. OK, so now I've got this vector. And uh, you know, so you're doing this the first time. And you, well, how the hell do you set a vector? And you go, well, Vec, um, what can I do? Oh, OK. I can do a lot of stuff. Um, so you've got set. You've got set quick. You try them both. Turns out set quick is the one you want. Okay. So let's just get that whole function in. So this is basically the helper that's just going to pass through and convert our articles into Mahout vectors. Because Mahout vectors is what everything operates on. Um, we better have them. OK, any questions so far? This is all pretty standard. All right. So since I'm not doing this in Scalding, um, I wanted to give you a flavor uh, of sort of how this algorithm works. So actually, what I'm going to do is I think articles, there's about 4,500 um, in, in the group I have. So actually, I'm just going to chunk them. If you've never seen this function, it's pretty cool, grouped. Um, so you can call it on probably like gen traversable or something. Uh, basically, it groups it into chunks of 400, and that truncates the last one. Um, so this is essentially me saying that my data is located in multiple places. Um, why don't I operate on each one separately? And then I'm going to pull all the stuff together. So this is the mappers, if you like. Um, so let's try this guy out. OK, great. Um, it actually hasn't done anything yet. It's, it's lazy. OK, so that one's not so exciting. OK, so here's the exciting part. Um, so this streaming k-means algorithm um, basically has two parts to it. So in the first part, pretend we have tons and tons of data, say like n points where n is huge. So the first thing that's going to happen is we're basically going to draw a sketch of our data. And the way we draw the sketch is we go through all the data, or each mapper, the amount of data it has. And it, it basically grabs the first point and says, hey, you're a cluster, or a centroid, if you like. Um, and now it grabs the next one. And it says, are you close to a centroid I know about? Uh, if you are, then you are part of that centroid. Or maybe you're a new centroid with uh, probability 1 over the distance that you're actually away. Um, if you are past some distance threshold, it says you're a new centroid too. Um, so it goes through. Um, the idea is that if you have endpoints and you have, want k clusters in the end, you're going to get something like k log n uh, uh, sort of centroids in your sketch. So these are like sloppy clusters is what they call them. Um, so basically, it's, it's a probabilistic uh, summary of your data. 
So let me go through, this is where the, the nice wrapping comes in. Um, so basically you need this guy. He's a cluster. Uh, so this is this, uh, you know, nasty Mahout package. Okay, so, so the cluster needs a searcher and it needs a distance measure and it needs a, an approximate size. So note that this size is just sort of a suggestion um, and you'll see probably it's, it's not a, followed that, uh, <laughs> that carefully. Um, so actually there's a whole lot of these nice um, searchers for this size of stuff and for the sort of giant vectors that we're dealing with, the brute search is actually going faster than the other ones. Um, but so they have a, they have a locality sensitive hashing. They know there's a bug somewhere in it, so it, it's really inconsistent. They have a couple projection searches, which are pretty cool. Um, but in practice, actually the brute searcher is beating it for, uh, beating them for me. So, which is kind of strange to me. Um, it probably means that I don't have enough stuff going into it. Um, Okay, and then there's just a little side effect here. So uh, you can't have a Scala talk without uh, slipping a var in. Um, so everybody can look down on you. So, <laughs> so basically these centroids need like some key or uh, basically, so I, I'm just gonna increment up. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, but if they all have the same one, it, it gets uh, confused. So notice then what I'm doing. So I've got my groups. Remember I chunked this guy into groups about size 400. Um, I turned it into iterable because uh, because par doesn't work on the iterator. Um, so this is where Scala is awesome. Um, basically, I'm calling par now. So I'm turning this into a parallel collection uh, and I'm calling map. So what's going to happen is this guy is actually going to fork off a whole bunch of uh, processes and run these all separately, right? And then collect them back together. And this is all I had to do. It's completely safe. There's no way I can screw it up. Um, in this way, and uh, each one of these will get its own cluster, just like you would have in MapReduce. The mappers will do all the stuff they need. At the end, it will put them all together into one big list. So let's give it a shot. So then I'm all, all I'm doing then is basically just saying, okay, wrap this guy in this other thing that it needs called a centroid. Um, this is where it's, it's kind of nice to, to be able to do all this in Scala, to be honest, because um, there's always something that you have to wrap or use or whatever. Um, and then just increment the count. So basically add this guy. And then this re-index is just a kind of a last step that they recommend doing. So let's give it a shot. And I'm gonna, before I kick it off, where does this guy live? Three? Yeah. Okay, so we can actually watch it. Okay, are we ready? So just to prove that it's actually gonna do something, you should be able to see, um, did it go? No, it did not go. Here we go, let's try again. There we go. So you can see this guy, if you can see that, basically it's, I think I have eight cores. It's using just about all of them. Um, you basically get all this for free, it's amazing. So if I were to do this without the parallel, it, it probably would have taken about eight times as long, to be honest. It's almost linear in the number of uh, cores you have here. So this is pretty cool. Um, so now we've got all these guys and we could poke at them if we really want. So we could say like send dot. So I know what to look for because I've done this too many times today. Um, but <laughs> so, and this is where the, the sort of Scala interop comes in really handy too because these, these searcher objects or these cluster objects essentially have an iterator but if you want to feed another one in, it has to be iterable, um, which, is <laughs> which becomes a huge pain. So it, it's actually, you can just sort of do this uh, fancy, uh, fancy dance here and uh, do it like that. So uh, we asked for 40, we got like 200-ish on each of them. Um, I'm not sure why, to be honest. It's, it's brand new to me, to some of this, so uh, we'll probably figure it out in days to come. Okay, so we've got all our clusters. We want to stick them all together. Um, so we basically just grab all those points out. Um, so again, you can't have a functional top without flat map either. So basically, um, all I'm doing here is just saying, well, actually spit out all these lists into one giant list, okay? And then finally, there's a, so the, the end part of the algorithm then is we did this sloppy version. So now we use a really fancy uh, expensive version like ball k-means, if you can see this guy. Um, and then basically cluster the, the sketch using uh, an iterative process on one reducer. So the idea though is that your data is only about 
uh, k log n, so it actually fits no problem into memory uh, unless you're doing something really, really strange. So we can do this guy. Um, we get our cluster, and then we can just say something like b cluster. Just tell it to cluster them up. And this guy's kind of slow. So while, that's, while you're watching that, um, any questions? So I'm going to hand it back off to Vitaly. I, I told you I'd be fast. Yes? So how would algebra be compared to Scala Z? That's a good question. I, I think Scala Z has much, much more stuff in it. Um, and I think algebra is maybe a little easier to use. So you know that's not the best answer, maybe. Um, but I, they both have monoids. Um, I think Algebraid is kind of concerned itself mostly with just having uh, some algebraic data structures, like monoids and semigroups and groups and rings and fields and vector spaces, and then they have this aggregator idea. Um, I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I haven't used Scala Z that much. So, I mean, do they have a lot of stuff predefined in there as well, or do they just is it a, do they just have the framework? Honestly, we just use Firebase or. Sure. <laughs> don't really use like okay, because I mean the things that. Algebra, like Vitaly was saying, has some amazing stuff in it for you already. Um, I mean, it's basically got, uh, so Bloom filters is a monoid, right? You just keep slapping into the filter. Count min sketch is a monoid. Hyperlog log is a monoid. Stochastic gradient descent uh, is a monoid. Like least common ancestor in trees is a monoid. Um, like Vitaly said, you could probably go through and ask anybody what their project is, and it's probably a monoid underlying it. Um, and there was actually a paper, I think, that was just, uh, came out of Twitter um, from Jimmy Lin, who's a professor at Maryland, which was basically like everything you want to do is a monoid. Um, it, the title's something like that. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm probably butchering it, but it, it's pretty cool. Um, so a lot of that stuff's in there for you already, which is pretty nice. Um, and it's, the API is super simple. Like the, the monoid API, um, you, know, you, you basically just have to define plus and zero. Um, and for most stuff you're doing, you're probably using a semi-group, so you don't even need the zero. Um, so you just have to define plus. And, uh, you know, they're not doing any actual validation. You know, I can say something's a monoid, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, and I'll find out, you know, six hours down the line in my job. Um, but for the most part, you, you probably have a monoid, right? So the only condition on the monoid is when you call plus, you better end up back in the monoid. Um, okay, I'm going to hand it back to Vitaly. Uh, this was your uh, Mahout, Mahout break. Was I? Okay, so the next uh, thing I would like to show is um, how we can um, do s similarity between Wikipedia articles. For example, you know, find which articles in Wikipedia are similar. And f in order to do this, I will use a concept called uh, cosine similarity, which is also, uh, Chris just used it. Cosine similarity, it's maybe it's uh, best uh, to show. So I have here this, Sorry, this um, uh, word, word count uh, data. So I just took my um, took the data set before and basically wrote it in this form where I have the article name and then a word and how many times it appears. So we want to some uh, similarity measure between the words of each article. And basically, it's to take, well, if the word after shows up in the clock orange 10 times and it shows up in some other article also 10 times, then maybe those uh, articles are similar. Um, if you think about it, it's kind of not a simple problem, especially if you're doing it on all of the Wikipedia uh, articles. So we have to loop over Wikipedia article and then the second loop over all the Wikipedia article and then we have to loop for all the words and we, the way cosine similarity works is that you uh, multiply the, uh, kind of the, multiply the word counts and uh, then uh, sum, sum it up together. Kind of a more formal definition in cosine similarity is uh, the square root, uh, square root of the sum of uh, kind of the dot product. So, there is a long way um, to do it, but since we're short on time, uh, let's show you the very quick way to do it. And, and the, uh, let's define similarity. Similar, no, similarity. Uh, yeah, it's late. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
So, okay, I have my data here, I read it, and I'm now using, uh, I, I'm using the, actually, the pipe format because what I'm about to do next is uh, actually works better with uh, this format and not the typed one. And like I explained, it, taking elements um, and multiplying uh, them together is also uh, called dot product, and dot product is a basic linear algebra operation. And Scully has this great linear algebra um, uh, API that we're now uh, going to use. So let's take those words and convert them to matrix. And you see there is, we can just convert it to matrix, and we need to define what, what is the row, what is the column, and what is uh, the value, what, what are the types. So what's great about, um, again, this API, that unlike normal matrices, uh, you don't have to be, you know, uh, convert all of your data to some I indices. They don't have to be, the row in the column in the indices don't have to be integers. They can be strings. Sorry, those are the columns? Yes, sorry. Anyway, yes, I think that's better, right? Um, string, string, and our data will be double because, well, math works better with doubles. And let's take this stopple so we will know how to use it. So now what we have is this very cool string, string, double matrix. And matrix has a lot of operations on it. Um, one of them, um, Kind of one thing that uh, it's better to do for custom similarity, because if we just multiply, we will get just the uh, uh, the articles that are the longest um, are the most similar because you know they have a lot of the same words, so the multiplication will be large. So we need to normalize it. Um, so just let's do uh, normalize, and well, Twitter uh, this gives those two normalization, L1 and L2. L1 is basically having all um, the sum of the row equal one, L2 is having the square root of the sum of uh, uh, squares to be two, but since we're doing a dot product, we'd like um, some article with itself to be equal, uh, the similarity to be equal one. So now again, even the row, uh, just the L2 normalization to write it, even in Scalding, uh, which is a very, very uh, com compact MapReduce uh, framework, it probably will take you like five lines or something like that. If you do it in Java, God forbid, um, it will take you 500. Um, so, uh, you know, one line, it's extremely useful. And now here it comes. Uh, instead of, it's just long to do everything with everything, so let's just take a random uh, article, which probably uh, won't be random. So, um, words, we can, I think it's called get row, no? So row, yeah, what's the row stuff? You remember, Chris? Uh, get row, row. You gotta define the matrix. What? I, ah, well, yeah, that's, that's the problem, right. So re, um, like I said, it's late. Matt dot get row, okay. So let's just get row, and one of the articles I have there is Audi. And now, in order to get Audi's similarity with the entire set of the, the rest of Wikipedia, which is uh, the matrix, we just need to multiply it by matrix, but well, not exactly, the transpose. Um, and so now that we basically have a transpose matrix, and again, for those of you who are kind of rusty on linear algebra or it's just too late for you. The reason why, I should, so the row um, is basically is one by the amount of features I have, which is, I don't know how many words are there uh, in Wikipedia. And the, uh, when I do transpose, then all those words become the columns and uh, all the rest of the articles um, will become um, will become, and sorry, and I will get basically an, uh, a score, a cosine similarity score 
for Audi with every other article. And the way it looks, it basically, again, I get a row vector with string, which string will be a name of an article and a double. And that's it. So we just need to write it. Now, let's write it. PSV, source, data, um, source, sorry, main, data, oh, shit. Data and matrix dot text. Okay, and let's just call sign, change it, uh, run it. So yeah, and one thing to remember uh, while trans, again, you just take this code and upload it to, to uh, your Hadoop cluster as is, and it can run on, so this metrics uh, API works extremely smart, and uh, so it's also kind of sparse vector, uh, sparse ma matrix library. It's all kind of hashed is uh, distributed smartly between the nodes and does all the operation it knows, and Okay, here it took it 45 seconds to finish, and let's look at the results. What did I have there? Um, Called metrics, right? Okay, so we see actually um, the cl clockwork orange is not that similar to Audi, um, thankfully. And let's you know, let's just sort it. And I think here is probably one of the best way to sort it is maybe sort minus k2 minus n. No, sorry. No, no, that, what? It is reverse, but it's a, wasn't it k2? No, why isn't it sorted? Ah, I need the delimiter. Uh, crap. How do I do the delimiter and sort? What? Dash T. Um, yes, field separator slash T. No, that's not it. Well, never mind. Um, let's just, yeah, I don't know. It's this Unix stuff. I, can I sort it here? Group, all. Oh. To pipe. No. Okay, let's just sort. <laughs> oh my god, I'm, it's just too late. Uh, valve, again, cosine equals um, type TS, uh, typed pipe dot from. I really want to see the results. Let's, uh, type. Uh, so what did I have there? It's uh, doubles, it's strings and doubles, right? String, double, um, source, main, data, that matrix, dot txt. Okay, what's wrong with double? Yes, that's wrong with double. And now cosine dot group all, just gonna show you how to sort. Rubble sort by the second one. Ah, and uh, if you remember, I told you about this uh, thing that uh, one of the reasons why I can't show you it on the REPL because it's so optimizing, so well, uh, you can see it here. So I do sort by in reverse, which is doesn't actually sort, sort it and then reverse it. It just optimize for sorting by the reverse ordering which is smart of them to do because otherwise it would be, well, not very smart. <laughs> yes. Sorry, dot uh, values, dot write, and now we do this sorted. TSV, source main data, sorted, dot txt. Sort.
Okay. Hopefully the, sor the Unix sort wasn't working properly and it wasn't the right result and the right results will look better. But well, let's see. Okay. Well, that was fast. Um, more sorted. Okay, so Audi, we got one, which is, okay, it's a good sign, right? Um, auto racing, armored car, assembly line, analog. Do, okay, anyone knows who August Horch is? The second, driver. what? Probably a race car driver. Race, um, well, good thing we have this, we have internet, so let's <laughs> use Wikipedia. Uh, what was the name, August Horch? Yes, August Horch. Okay, and August Horch is, a uh, German engineer and something, something, uh, what, what do you do? Audi. Yes, eventually became Audi. Which is, uh, and that is from this article, so probably you just recognize the word Audi. Uh, one, thing, uh, um, one thing I kind of skipped that uh, helped me to actually achieve this re result. Um, I also did TFIDF on the word counts because otherwise I would get, again, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of articles that has the word A and the word V in them, which is not that interesting. But uh, once you do TF-IDF, and again, it's uh, installing just a couple of lines, you calculate the TF. Well, TF is the word count, right? The IDF is uh, just the uh, document count, and you kind of normalize by it. Then uh, the word Audi, and I probably, you know, Germany, uh, probably also the years probably match, and stuff like that, and now it becomes, and again, um, kind of bring, you back to the code, where, where was it? That is, well, besides the row to normalize, that is all the code necessary. That's, that thing is, I think, amazing. You know, that just take the row, multiply, it's, well, linear algebra for all of this, you folks who haven't listened in their college, uh, during their college classes. So <laughs> now, now you finally know what, what this is good for, and, well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of it. So any questions? Yeah, I it's late. Okay, uh, thank you guys for coming. Yes.